Hey everybody, what's up? It's OCD Mikey, Hi-Fi Guy here for another Mikey show. And today I'm going to take you through in less than 10 minutes how to build yourself a music server, okay? And you can do it many different ways. Um, there are either servers or streamers. A server is, 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 you can tell because it has a hard drive in it and it stores your music library. A streamer does not have the music library it's only for playback. Or you can have something like this where it's a combo unit where it is the core uh, or, the, or the server and you also use it for playback. Okay, generally speaking, you, if you separate your server and your streamer or your playback unit and your library management tool, you're going to want to use the powerful processor in the library management and you're going to want to use a very calm, mellow one like a Celeron or an Atom for your streamer part because there's less noise with the smaller CPU. The bigger the CPU is, the more noise it makes, more noise it puts on your output. Um, so if you're combining them, like in this model here, you use something kind of right in the middle, which would be like um, i3, which is an acceptable one that you can use for both playback and library management. Keep in mind, Rune software is going to be resource intensive. Uh, there are other softwares out there that are very light, very streamlined. Volumio is one. Uh, Euphony used to make one. I'm not sure if they still do or not. Um, Small Green Computer used to make one called Sonic Orbiter. These are all very light, and um, they're Linux distros, which means it's Linux operating system, which is totally what I recommend. I do not recommend using a Windows operating system for your server. Why? Because it's not made for music. It's made for desktop computing and word processing, and you're stripping it down and making, you know, forcing it to work as a music server, which does work, but you've got Windows updates and all sorts of other BS with Microsoft, um, and it's, and it's, it's, it's uh, you know, tentacles into your server all the time. All sorts of weird threads and shit like that that you don't need for music, okay? Linux, the Linux distros that you get, the operating systems that are Linux are only made for music, and that's it. They don't report back to the mothership and uh, have nothing to do with Microsoft, all that crap. So you're going to want to use, in my opinion, a Linux distro for your music server. Forget Windows, forget Mac OS, okay? Um, this is very basic build. You find your chassis. That's the first thing you do. Number one, here's the recipe. Number one, get your computer chassis. Any computer chassis will work. All it has to do with is what kind of room you have at your rig and what you want to look at on your at your rig. I chose this, and this was I made for a customer, oh man, like five years ago, four, four years ago. Um, and this is an HD Plex chassis that I took. I polished the front. Um, and this is a custom H, uh, HD Plex, but HD Plex is a company. The stuff is made in China, um, but it's an American company and he's got good prices and, um, and it's good stuff. So, um, I don't sell it cause I, you know why. And, um, and I don't make servers anymore, but all you need is first you get your chassis. Okay. Now for the server, you can get one that doesn't, I, I recommend getting like a mini ITX, which is this size where it's got a barrel plug for the power. That means you don't have to have a power supply up in here making everything noisy. You don't have to have the big ITX plug thing that goes in there and all this crap, computer stuff. All you need is a linear power supply. Keysees makes one, There's low there, and all it does is plug right in. So the power supply is somewhere else and you have a plug come up with your 19 volts or your 12 volts if you choose a 12 volt motherboard. Okay, um, this motherboard here has um, a, you can put your own CPU in. That's a, that's the 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 main brain or the engine for this thing is the CPU. You can get a mini ITX with an embedded CPU, which means it's it's already soldered onto the board. You don't need to mess with this, which has an i3 that I had to put on, and then I had to put all these heat pipes that go over to the side heat sinks to cool this because it's fanless. So if it's a a big CPU like this is a i3 in here. Um, you're going to need cooling, and that comes with the HD Plex chassis. I think this thing's around 150, maybe 200 bucks. Um, if you have an embedded 
uh, like a Celeron or an Atom, a smaller CPU, you will not need all this apparatus. You will not need to hook up the cooling pipes because it, it can cool on its own with a heat sink directly on the CPU. So the first thing you do is you find your, your chassis and then you get a CP, uh, you get a motherboard that fits your chassis. Okay, so that's the first thing is you buy a chassis. Number two in the recipe is you buy your motherboard that fits the chassis. Okay, the third thing you do is you get yourself RAM, which are these two sticks in here. You get yourself as much RAM as you can put in there that's a fast RAM. Okay, so I think this one has eight gigabytes. You can put 16 gigs, 32, whatever you want, but the, the more RAM, the better. You know, so put a reasonable amount of RAM in there. Um, you put in your hard drive, okay, which this one's a two terabyte SSD, um, and then you put in um, a USB output card. This one's from SOTM. I also use JCAT, which is another brand. I like JCAT better. There's also Matrix Audio. That's a Chinese one. If you want to buy uh, the, you know, the cheapest um, version would be that Chinese Matrix. Um, um, but I like the JCAT is my favorite. It's made in Canada. Um, and that would plug in just like this. Now, in a small chassis like this where you don't have much room, normally this thing plugs in straight up and down onto the motherboard uh, vertically. Um, if you don't have room, like in this one, you need to get what's called a riser cable. That's this thing right here, this little jumper. And, and it takes, it does a 90 degree, allows you to put um, the PCIe, which is what this is, type straight in like this and then plug it into the motherboard, into the PCIe slot right here. Um, and, and it makes it easier to fit in this layout, okay? So once you have that done, now you're ready to roll. You put the, you, you, all you do is you plug this thing in, you're gonna get DOS, which is um, the basic um, language for the motherboard, and you're gonna have to load your distro, distro or mount, mount your distro, mount this drive, put the distro in. Now, I'm not gonna go into that shit, because that gets, um, um, you know, I can't, I can't start explaining that kind of crap to you guys. You need to at least know how to put um, software onto a hard drive and get it to work on a computer. You need to load an operating system onto this drive, and then everything will work, man, um, because it's Linux and everything works when you plug in PC stuff with Linux. Um, and that's all you have to do. Then you take and you power, you get a card, make sure that you get a, a, a USB output card that has an external power supply, which means you don't power this thing off the motherboard. You power this off your same power supply that you use for the motherboard. Kesey's has a dual voltage one. One is 19 volts to power the server, the other is nine volts um, or five volts or 7.5 to power your audio card. So you power both of these externally, okay? And then you run your USB out to your DAC, you run ethernet from your um, network into this thing, and then you use a tablet or your phone if you want, but tablet's easier to see. And this is called a heads up display or a heads up, a headless computer. And you go on the network with that and you, and you get yourself set up and, and you're just going to use Rune or Volumio or whatever software you choose. Some is free, some costs, um, some has support. And it all depends on how comfortable you are with the computer, whether you want to do it yourself or whether you want to buy. Um, Euphony used to sell drives with their software loaded, ready to go, which was super cool because you could just put this in, plug it in, and boom, it was plug and play, ready to go. You have all your periphery, your, your, your um, different uh, cards and things that would automatically be fine. You don't have to worry about uh, loading those on. They, they automatically sense. So... That's all there is to it, to having a, to having a music server. These music servers that are $20,000, $50,000 50, are absolutely ridiculous. All they do is they take these things and they put them into milled out aluminum chassis where you have little con compartments for the USB card and you have a compartment for the motherboard. And sure, it's a better way to do it, but I mean, how much real sonic benefit do you get? The bottom line is you get more benefit from putting the money into a DAC and saving your money and building your own server or buying a $2,000 or a $4,000 server than buying, you don't need the $20,000 server. It's ridiculous, okay? Put your money into your DAC and then something like this will sound phenomenal. My DAC and my system sounds incredible even with a $150 streamer that I get from Allo just to test to see how good my DAC is with a no, uh, uh, you know, an S, a single board SBC like a Raspberry Pi streamer, you know. Um, 
The DAC is where the rubber hits the road. This is basic. This is a server. It's just a computer. Okay, that's all it is. Servers are only computers. And all this computer we're asking it to do is to spit out a digital bitstream of music. That's the easiest thing you're ever going to ask a computer to do. It's absolutely simple. So this is, in a nutshell, how to make yourself your own server. Um, you can uh, in, go talk in the comments below. Again, please support my channel by subscribing if you like my content um, and give me a thumbs up. Uh, and that's it, brothers and sisters. Thanks for joining and see you.